Hello people and welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. It is Tuesday the 19th of July and of course it is time for another transfer update and Leeds United potentially raiding PSG for two of their players. But before we speak about them specific players, let's give you a quick round the houses update on the latest goings on. Please smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in and of course hit that notification bell. Just to give you an update on Tati Castellanos, I know a lot of Leeds fans were big fans of him and wanted to see him come to the Premier League and be a success at Leeds United. But apparently he is expected to join City Group side Girona very, very soon. So that move won't be happening. One that will be happening, of course, is Jamie Shackleton. He's set to join Millwall on loan for the season with a medical booked in over the next day or so. Uh, believe that will all be tied up this week. The key difference, though, unlike Creswell's, is that there's noises that that could be with a view to a permanent transfer next summer, like we've seen with Tyler Roberts and his move to QPR. So keep your eyes peeled on that and listen. Good luck to Jamie Shackleton. Um, I definitely think he can forge a career out in the championship and see where that takes him. Uh, we're now going to move on to, of course, a name that's continuously linked. It is PSG striker Arnold Kalimowendo. Seems to have gone a bit quiet. There's been some noises over the last 24 to 48 hours. And there seems to be a bit of a split in the camp at PSG between manager, new manager Galtier, and, of course, football advisor, sporting director Louis Campos. Apparently, Louis Campos is of the mind to move the player on and trim down the squad. Of course, PSG boast a number of attacking options, not least Lionel Messi. Kylian Mbappe, Neymar, Icardi. And of course, they've just made new signing Ekatike from Stade de Rem as well. Um, the only uh, stumbling block or issue they have currently is, of course, new manager Galtier has thrown a major curveball in and said, actually, I like what Callum Mwendo's doing during pre-season. I'm in no rush to sell him. You know, he's took him to Japan and wants to get a good look at him. Uh, he's been very, very impressed with the performances during pre-season and he'd like to wait before making a decision. And what that's doing as well is also creating competition for the signature. We've seen a number of clubs linked with Cali over the last week or so. Um, the clubs saw in his signature, of course, um, grow it. Um, you know, this is what happens when you don't capitalise and move very quickly. Of course, we've been waiting on CDK. We expect that to come to a close in the next... I don't know, a couple of days, I think AC Milan are meeting with Club Bruges and will go in with a bid that's probably going to be accepted. And therefore, Leeds United might make, a, you know, a more, uh, I guess, rougher play, if you like, for Callum Owendo, a more strenuous, you know, play for him. But in that time, what's happened is Newcastle have had a look. We know that Inter have been interested. And of course, now French Ligue 1 side, Nice, are having a look, a look as well. And that offers him the chance to stay in league and if that's what he wants to do. Of course, there's a potential of a buyback clause being thrown in there as well. And maybe he might not want to move away from Paris and, and see that as an option to getting that move back to PSG quick time, if indeed he, he does favour that. I believe he is from the mean streets of Paris. So, you know, he could well see that as an option. Of course, Inter as well will be competing at the top of the Scudetto. They only missed out on the league title by a couple of points last season. So, you know, again, that might, you know, win the battle for Cali. We've seen with CDK, once that move to AC Milan, this Champions League football, etc. Um, will he get regular game time there? I'm not too sure. Will he get it at Leeds? I would envisage so, yeah. So that's a conversation, you know, Leeds United need to have with Cali if indeed we do push the button on him and start to make serious moves. Of course, we were linked with Terrier uh, the other day from Wren. Uh, what Victor Orta has, I guess, in the nace in his pack is what's happened with Rafinha. You know, he's made that move to the Premier League. He's had two solid seasons and now he's at Barcelona. That can be sold to anyone coming from Ligue 1. Now, apparently we're the only side to have had proper formal conversations like made a formal approach. So we are in the driving seat and I'd like Leeds United to not sit and wait. Of course, a lot of people say we've got time, you know, they're taking the time, making sure they've got the right man, etc., but we're a, a little under or a little over, around three weeks away from the start of the season. And really, I want to see a striker in and at least have had some game time or some time with the squad before we start the season. I'm not convinced on Bamford's fitness. And um, apparently there's likely to be a buyback clause in there, like I touched on earlier. But that's totally fine with me as well. We need to remember, you know, like there was a lot of 
disgruntled fans last season when we were looking at loans and they weren't being made permanent. We need to recognise where we are. You know, we might only get players that come here for a couple of seasons. You might find that any buyback clause for Callum Moendo might be stuck in at 50 million. It'll be triggered two years down the line. But if Cali comes to Leeds and has two great seasons and moves to PSG, then so be it. We've got two great seasons out of him. That's what we need to do in order to progress up the league. I'm not too fussed about a buyback clause. I just want to see a striker in the door. Um, of course, another position where I want to see Leeds United um, start to make moves is, of course, in the left-back position. We know that Junior Thurpo's out. Uh, the options underneath that are not proper left-backs. OK, you could argue Leaf is, but he's not a Premier League left-back. Not for me. Leo Hjeldi has pay, played there as well. And, of course, Pascal Strauch and Jack Harrison are sort of makeshift options. So we know Leeds United need a new left-back and are in. Um, you know, the hunt for one. And apparently PSG left-back, Liam Kajava, could be that left-back. Now, what's happening with this situation, before we speak about him, the player, and the pros and cons of the situation, he's currently uh, signed up with a new agency firm um, and has been offered or touted out to Everton and Leeds United, which makes a lot of sense. The reason being is because Leeds United need a left-back, um, we're in a bit of a dire straight situation with the left back scenario. And of course, Everton, I believe, only have like Mikalenko there. So they're short of options as well. And what's quite interesting, this new agency firm uh, have players in there, you know, under their tutelage, the likes of Jorginho, Zaha, Kyle Walker, Madison, Deli Ali, Richarlison, Varane. They have a number of players that are in the Premier League, they are established in the Premier League. Of course, we've seen previously new urgency firms coming in and getting players moves. It happens to Leeds United, you know. Grealish's agency got older Calvin. Next thing you know, he's at City, much like Grealish was. This sort of stuff goes down. So the fact that he's now got this new agency firm that are quite prominent in the Premier League, I've just listed them players there, isn't it quite interesting that the two clubs you could argue were most in need of a left-back in Everton because they only have one decent one, and Leeds United, who's just got injuries and don't really have options there, and now being offered uh, as a potential, um, you know, destination for Kurzawa, if, of course, that, that happens. Now, PSG do want to sell him. You know, he's not being taken uh, to Japan, you know, like Kelly Mwendo has. He's not being taken um, and wants to optimise his chances of leaving, you know what I mean, and wants to make a move um, and, and resurrect his career. Uh, it's a good, a very, very big chance that he does leave the French champions this summer and for a Premier League club. Um, so Leeds United need a left back. Would this be one we could do? Of course, listen, he's got history on his side in terms of winning things. Kurzweil has won four league titles in total in, in France. I think 16 domestic trophies was previously at Monaco. I think he played 96 times there, scoring eight goals. Then in 2015 was transferred to PSG for 23 million euros and has obviously done well at PSG but what I get I guess a main stumbling block or major flag for this though when you think about Kurzweil as a, as a potential signing is that he didn't actually make a single appearance in Liga in last season or the Champions League and he was hardly a regular starter before that they've got Bernard I think they've brought in a, uh, back on loan or, or, or maybe made a, a permanent signing of Nuno Mendes uh, I don't know the situation prior to that, um, but he, he, you know, he was never a mainstay in the in the, in the side. It's also very much like Furpo. We were worried about Mark Rocker being a, a, a Furpo esque signing, but Mark Rocker just couldn't get ahead of those that were you know in front of him. I think with Kurzweil, it's very similar to the junior Furpo scenario. Um, and do we need another reclamation project? Do we need another situation like junior Furpo? I would argue not. Could it be third or 2.0? Do we do we need to run the risk of making that signing when we know there are other options out there? I believe uh, Toffolo from uh, who could be going to Forest. Apparently, that's broke down. There's obviously Charlie Taylor as well, who's an option. But I heard uh, listening to something earlier that West Ham are potentially looking at him because they have Creswell and only Creswell, and he's not getting any younger. So. The, the, I guess the, the options that are out there are, are dwindling in terms of what Leeds United could do. We need to get a bit quicker on it. But, of course, Kurzawa could be an option for Leeds. What would be your opinion on that? Would it be something you'd be sold on if he can stay fit? He's coming towards the end of his career. He's 29. 
can Leeds United be bothered with another reclamation project? I want to know your thoughts in the comments and what you, you think, first of all, about the link. Because when I've seen it, I'm like, yo, you know, I think you can easily get bogged down on, oh, this is a PSG left back. Let's make that happen. But when you strip it back a little bit, OK, might want a new challenge and resurrect his career. But is it the right signing for Leeds United right now? You know, potentially not. Does it fit the mould that Leeds United have been uh, going after recently? Probably not. I think it's more an Everton signing. Let them take Kurzweil of and us go for a younger option. But if we were to sign him, would I be disappointed? I would argue no. I just want to see another left back in the door. If he came and, you know, I mean, he's a winner, right? He's a winner. He has won things, OK? The last couple of seasons haven't been the best. For him. I mean, last season, he didn't make a single appearance and we know what's happened with Thurpo in that in that instance, but he's he's a winner. He's won things, obviously, at Monaco and then moved on to PSG. There is a player there. It's just whether or not at this stage of his career we can rely on him um, because we certainly can't rely on Firpo. Do we then want another Firpo 2.0? I want to know your thoughts in the comments. Initially, I was excited by the link, but then having time to think, is it the right option? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks, as always, for watching. Enjoy the sun if you can. It's killing me, I can't lie. Um, but I'll see you in a bit. Peace out. Leads is leads.